Hi, my name is Alex Pasha, and I just graduated from Savvy Coder's 12-week full-stack web development bootcamp. I have always had a strong interest in tech, and I knew after building my first computer at 14 that I would end up working with computers one way or another. I confirmed to myself that programming would be the right path for me after I took my first Java class in high school. I was looking for a way to get into the tech industry with no previous tech experience, and when a friend told me he had completed the Savvy Coders bootcamp, and had a great experience, after hearing that, I knew I was ready to take the next steps and enroll. Once I applied and completed the pre-work, I could tell I had made the right decision. Before we could start coding, we needed to learn Agile methodologies. Agile is a framework for product management that guided me and my team throughout the cohort. As the product owner of my team, I was responsible for developing and communicating the product goals and ensuring that everyone on my team clearly understood the backlog. After I established a strong understanding of Agile, it was time for me to think of a project that I would work on throughout the course. I decided to create an application that I call a Tinder for restaurants near you. I wanted something that would allow you to quickly and easily find something to eat and something that wasn't overbearing with information. I started by drawing out wireframes for my project to have a loose idea of what it would look like towards the end. And while my ambitions were a little high, I was able to stay mostly true to my wireframes and create a minimum viable product that closely resembled what I had envisioned. As you can see here, my initial wireframes, this was my home page. So it's just a very simple layout that would allow you to continue on to the next page that would let you set preferences. And after you set your preferences, you would continue to the main restaurant page where you would scroll through images using yes or no. I also wanted to create a review page that you could get to from the restaurant page that would show you the same restaurant that you were currently viewing. And then, of course, a contact page. Using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Node, MongoDB, Express, Axios, and Navigo, I was able to create a single page application that I ended up naming Eater. As you can see here, my end result doesn't differ very much from my wireframes and maintains a simple layout that is easy to understand and navigate. I'll first walk you through what my project does, and then I will break into the code to show you where the functionality is coming from. So when you load into the home page, you can continue to restaurants or contact me here. And if you go here, it takes you to my LinkedIn profile. But if you continue to restaurants, after allowing geolocation, it will pull up the closest restaurant to you. And you can scroll through them. And once you see one that you like, you click yes, and it takes you to the restaurants page. If you wanna leave a review on the restaurant, you click leave a review, decide what you thought it was, one through five, type your review and submit it. So my project uses three different APIs, the geolocation API, Yelp's API, and then my review API, as a REST API that I created myself. So now we can get into the code. One of my favorite parts of the cohort was creating a file structure for an SPA. As you can see here, I created a components folder that allows you to have constants that would be displayed throughout the project. And while my project doesn't implement constants, it was still interesting to learn that this was a possibility. Within my components folder, I also have view folders that represent each page and where to put the code for displaying it to the user. To make this work, we had to export each view inside of an index.js folder and then import the correlating page on each file, as well as doing the same with the store folders that came into play while implementing APIs. Starting with my home page. I maintained simple HTML, just like displayed with what the user sees. But when we go to the main restaurant page is where things started to get a little more interesting. Instead of hard coding in restaurant names, I access Yelp's API 
based on what restaurant we're currently at. If we go to the index folder here, we can see where I get the user's geolocation and plug it into the Yelp API. This is also where we are storing response data, which takes you here. The no button was the main blocker for my project. Having to iterate through arrays as well as store the data was a lot more difficult than I expected it to be. But when I was able to finally get it, it was a very satisfying feeling. Moving on to the review page is where I started with creating my own REST API. As you can see here, I pull the current restaurant image to the review page as well so that the user knows they are looking at the same restaurant. Using Yelp's API was a little more difficult than I expected because Yelp API does not allow you to make requests from the front end. So because of that, I had to create a proxy server that allows us to make requests to Yelp's API from the back end. And you can see here, this is where I did that. For my review API, as I said before, it starts here. And then we have the schema and the CRUD operations. While I was able to create a minimum viable product, there is still a lot of items that I would like to implement into my project in the future, such as user login and password, a specific preferences page to set things such as delivery, type of food, price range, and so on. While working on my project, I was able to truly see how much of a passion I have for coding, specifically working with APIs and being able to implement so much data in so many different ways. With this being just the start of my journey, into tech, I'm excited to be able to continue constantly learning throughout my career. Thank you for watching my presentation.